Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. For this video, I'm going to be reacting to Atozi's video about the TikTok psychic. So this one is titled TikTok Psychic Made a Fool of Herself in Court. So I've been keeping up with her through him. And I thought it was so dumb. Like she thought she knew what she was talking about. She um, wasn't minding her own business and like started involving herself in some crime and now she committed a crime because she was telling all these lies, acting like she knew everything because she was trying to be a psychic. But um, I guess her psychic abilities didn't tell her that she's going to go to court <laughs> and get in trouble. But uh, yeah, let's see what happened to her. This is a pretty long video, so I wonder if everything will uh, be revealed, like if the court case is finished or I don't know. Was there a ruling? I don't know. But uh, yeah, let me stop talking and let's get into this video and please subscribe. Let me know what else I should react to in the comments below. Well, I mean, in case you were wondering, the TikTok psychic yes, shenanigans, they're still ongoing and it gets <clears throat> more and more insane for every month that goes by. As the court case is still ongoing because Ashley, the TikTok psychic, keeps filing counterclaims. So it seems like it's just delaying the inevitable. But here we are. Um, if you're lost, yeah, we're still talking about the TikTok psychic who used the when you're in the wrong the poor Idaho students but you don't for her own gain on it. TikTok. And she did all of this it. by That's making so up an elaborate story about an innocent professor from Idaho. Like you made up all these lies, you really think they're true no, you don't want to victims admit and therefore it. she was behind all of this the only problem here is the professor has never met you the don't victims, want people to know the only proof you're a scammer the tiktok psychic has is tarot cards her vision and her intuition so yeah she essentially just pulled it out of her but the most surprising thing of all this was when Rebecca Schofield, the innocent professor in all of this, sent her a cease and desist, her reaction was to laugh at it. I'm about to put this demand letter Rebecca Schofield attorney sent me by the tissue so I can wipe my and she proceeded to make an absolute mockery of the cease and desist. It's and so I guess dumb. in her own delusional mind, that make made all her this think stuff that her tarot cards and act like it's true. something now. The only thing that they're so onto weird. is bankrupting her. But over the last year, we've seen the TikTok psychic Ashley go through a whole bunch of different emotions in regards to this case. First, it was arrogance. And you don't know these people. Why would you involve real, yourself in something down on her arrogance. that you had no business being involved in? Rebecca Schofield that validates everything that I've said about her. But I can't There's something speak wrong on it now inside her head. <laughs> it has to wait for court. And so she has a kid. Hopefully, court doesn't take too long. This is when she was excited to prove that Rebecca Schofield is behind all of this. But then suddenly, I guess <clears throat> reality set in for her, and then she started freaking out, saying that this lawsuit should have never happened in the first place. It was an improper venue, and so on and so on. Then she didn't even respond in time, and everything just turned into a massive mess. But it now seems like she's filed a bunch of counterclaims. Eleven, to be exact. What is and she counterclaiming? I do have to give a quick shout out to Madcaster for sending me all these documents, so special thank you to this man counter here's claiming Rebecca for Schofield's what? lawyer's motion to dismiss Ashley's counterclaims defendant Ashley Gilliard has filed 11 frivolous counterclaims alleging the plaintiff Rebecca Schofield had an inappropriate affair with a student ordered that of four students and conspired with her attorneys to sue Gilliard for defamation to evade suspicion obstruct justice and avoid criminal investigation in support of her claims Gilliard said that her spiritual research into all of the at the University of Idaho. Okay, I don't know what these led to the University out words of Idaho are. History Department, so she then spiritually inquired into each person listed on the history. What? So she then spiritually inquired into each person listed on the history department's webpage, and her insight for Rebecca Schofield revealed that she was in a relationship with Kaylee that broke up and she initiated, <laughs> planned the and hired help to carry the plan out. In other words, Gilliard made up the story. So she is ruining her own life because she went on to the history department of this school and she just had Dang. the intuition to say that People oh, don't have this professor, nothing better to this do? random like, innocent <laughs> professor is behind all of this. Gilliard's claims all like, failed because they rely on There are on so many hobbies in the world that you can pick up, but this is the one you chose. claims also failed to properly allege the pretendent legal elements. Even uh, as this a, is a lot of reading, so I'm gonna litigant, speed Gilliard it up. should not be allowed to use this court as a platform to make frivolous allegations to continue her shameless self-promotion at the expense of Professor Schofield's reputation and peace of mind and the victim's memories. The court should dismiss all Gilliard's counterclaims under federal rule of civil procedure or its inherent power and exercise the inherent power to reward Professor Schofield for attorney's fees. Unfortunately, this is probably going to be the most uh, sane statement that we're going to read today. One of them, at least. Because, naturally, our TikTok psychic Ashley, she responded to this and she did so in a 20-page document. So, uh -oh. I mean, like, we, we might be, we'll, we'll be skipping around here, most likely. Introduction comes now. Counterclaimant Ashley Gilliard in opposition 
to the counter defendant Rebecca Schofield's motion to dismiss counterclaims. Pursuant to Campbell versus Wells Fargo Bank, it is standard that specifically when deciding federal rule of civil procedure, motions the court assumes all factual allegations contained in the complaint to be true, giving the claimant to include counterclaimant Ashley Gilliard the full benefit of the doubt. Counterclaimant Ashley Gilliard asserts that the statement she made in the factual allegations of the counter complaint are substantially true. Given the full benefit of the doubt, the 11 counterclaims Ashley Gilliard filed are merited. State's claim for relief are worthy of adjudication. And of course, it, here she comes just absolutely like doubling down. This is her doubling down for like the like, 70th time. Rebecca Schofield. How would she even prove this? Executed the blank <laughs> like, of four going to court, University you need evidence. Idaho students like, who were in Moscow, Idaho she on November 13, 2022. Rebecca Schofield went undetected by Moscow Police Department, Idaho State Police, and FBI detectives who were assigned to the case. But the TikTok psychic, she picked up on this. All these law enforcement agencies, they missed it, but Ashley Gilliard she knew because she has tarot cards and intuition. Oh man. And she just flat out says it as well. On, no <laughs> on November 24th, 2022, Ashley Gilliard used her psychic abilities, spiritual oh acuity, and investigative <coughs> skills to uncover the motive and details that led to the the students. But her psychic her abilities didn't and reported tell her that she was going to end up in court. To stop Ashley Gilliard's information from saying. being taken seriously and to silence her, Rebecca Schofield and her attorneys, Wendy and Elijah Corey filed a lawsuit against Ashley Gilliard with two frivolous claims for defamation. Rebecca Schofield initiated the lawsuit with full knowledge that she was responsible for the of the four students with the intent to harass, embarrass, humiliate, and discredit Ashley Gilliard. Oh man. The attorneys work concertedly on the lawsuit of Schofield versus Gilliard. Together they failed to exercise reasonable due diligence to ensure the truth of the claims against Ashley Gilliard before filing under oath that the claims are true. This must be one insane trip for these lawyers to have to work on this case and have to deal with her. <laughs> Instead, they conspired with Rebecca Schofield to discriminate against Ashley Gilliard for her spiritual beliefs and practices. They also harassed, embarrassed, humiliated, and discredited Ashley Gilliard and attempted to defraud her out of millions of dollars under the color of the law attorney and judicial immunity. The result of the tactical strategy to destroy Ashley Gilliard to prevent Rebecca Schofield from suspicion investigation of quadruple they collectively violated a multitude of Ashley Gilliard's rights that resulted in at least 11 merited claims for relief. Oh man. Defending okay, Ashley so Gilliard I can't guess what these words faith are. Spirit, <laughs> spiritual acuity Some and of them I did, practice. but... She has strongly what? held that she believes in everything that she said about Rebecca Schofield is substantially true, not once faltering despite circumstances. For that reason, the plaintiff's defamation claims does not meet the required elements. Counter-defendant's tactics so far is for the court to discriminate against spiritual practices and belief and deem it is implausible to meet the or reasonably true should have known it was false oh, element required a lot of for reading. a libel claim. Their tactic is unconstitutional as it requires an entire I thought it was going to be like summarized in the Title 7 of the Civil Rights Act of 1964 and protected behind the First Amendment of the U.S. Constitution to be determined as unreasonably by the court. They will not win this argument. Right, I'm going to skip some parts. Ashley Gilliard's sixth and seventh <laughs> uh, when he's just talking by himself and not reading. Not Ashley Gilliard decided to litigate her own defense and counterclaims. And this is where stuff gets uh, pretty wacky because uh, Ashley also requested discovery, which is interesting to say the least so so what discovery did she request well apparently ashley thinks that discovery is necessary on the following subjects issues for plaintiff which is rebecca so <laughs> she wants all of this from rebecca's defendants false statements about the plaintiff's relationship with kaylee and involvement with the <laughs> oh man the falsity of the defendant's statements defendant's awareness of the falsity of her statements the damages plaintiff incurred because of the defendant's false statements for defense and counterclaims the substantial truth of ashley gilliard's statements about rebecca schofield's role in the you know what the substantial truth of ashley gilliard's statements about rebecca schofield's relationship with kaylee the attorney's lack of due diligence before filing the civil complaint and the failure to abide by rule 11 the full details of the press release that defamed ashley gilliard and all involved who what when where why and any payments related to it all communication to used by Rebecca Schofield personally and professionally to write and communicate with co-conspirators and collaborators in the creative arts, manuscript, and book writing process to resolve the issue of her involvement in the planning of the you-know-what of the four university students, all social media accounts created by Rebe <laughs> Rebecca Schofield, and her IP address on TikTok and Facebook to establish her connection with the creation of accounts on social media to continuously this harass crazy. Ashley Gilliard. <laughs> just hitting her with the reverse Uno card here. I didn't harass you, you harassed me. All communications and financial accounts Rebecca like Schofield used at the university of Idaho to establish what does the and what does her lawyer actually think students. inside Rebecca of their head Schofield's personal and business financial records to establish like, a financial <laughs> connection to the four universities do they students. really think Obviously, they have a chance to get these but like what if she actually got all this discovery and she spent like a year to go through it and she couldn't find anything will she actually admit defeat then or like will she just claim she didn't receive everything in what universe would she need all of this like why and also who does she think she is Dang. with requesting all this information like who is she the government like, what like she went so far into this lie like I think she's 
think she believes herself, so she has no reason to turn back now. And co-conspirators of the, you know what, yeah. Oh my goodness. Communications, documents, emails, personal and business phone records between Rebecca Schofield and Wendy and so on and so on. Bruh. Pre and post filing of the lawsuits to establish a personal prior relationship between the two prior to the filing of the lawsuit. Schofield versus okay, Dillard. All see. work products between Rebecca Schofield the and next. Schol the attorneys and so on. <laughs> this is to establish hey, the lack about? of due diligence and adherence to the FRCP rule. Schofield's alibi for the day prior to, the day of, the night of, and the next day following. <laughs> Discovery boundaries limits the parties agree to limit the number of discovery tools as follows. No limits. <laughs> no. But well, the judge made a memorandum. After Wait, so is this possible for her to do this? Like, <clears throat> seems like something like I think he said it like the police or I don't know, the government or someone higher up, not just a normal person. Um, can request but can a normal person request this even if they were not even at the scene of the crime they just heard all of this on the internet and then started talking about it and then now they want to like, I don't even stand <laughs> I don't understand I do not understand um what is going on with her in her head like she really is going for this like she actually knows what's happening but this is so crazy like, I don't understand, like, how it got this far. But I guess she's going to keep on going. All of these shenanigans. So here's the, the judge memorandum here, which actually kind of puts Ashley a little bit in place here. So it starts off with this case arises out of the tragedy that happened on November 2022. The plaintiff, Rebecca Schofield, is a professor of the University of Idaho. She alleges that she never met the students and was not involved with their in any way. Notwithstanding, plaintiff alleges that defendant Ashley Gilliard posted over a hundred sensational TikTok videos falsely claiming Dang, that she 100? had an inappropriate romantic affair with one of the victims and then ordered... <laughs> to prevent the affair from coming to light. In turn, Plantiff initiated this action on December 21st, 2022, asserting two defamation claims against defendant. One is premised upon false statements regarding Plantiff's involvement with themselves. The other premised on a false statement regarding Plantiff's romantic relationship with one of the victims. Defendant, representing herself, did not immediately respond to Plantiff's complaint by January 17th, oh. 2023 deadline. A defendant must Wait, serve so an answer within have a lawyer? days of being served with a summons and complaint. As a result, herself. Plantiff moved for an entry of default on January 19th. A clerk's entry of default was then entered and mailed to the defendant on January 27th. On February 16th, 2023, defendant moved to set aside an entry of default. Plaintiff responded the next day, opposing defendant's efforts to set aside the entry of default, and filing a motion for default judgment pursuant to Rule yeah. On April 24, 2023, the parties consented to the under jurisdiction. Thereafter, on April 26, 2023, the court granted defendant's motion to set aside entry of default, denied plaintiff's motion for default judgment as a moot, and ordered defendants to respond to the plaintiff's complaint within 21 days. On May 16, 2023, defendant filed her answer, affirmative defenses, and counterclaims to the complaint, answer and counterclaim. With her answer and counterclaims, defendant denies that she defamed plaintiff because the accusations she made against plaintiff and defendant's TikTok videos are substantially true. Defendant maintains that she used her spiritual brain intuition, spiritual, spiritual practice, brain. and investigative skills to uncover the <laughs> truth regarding of the University of Students, yeah, and published her findings on the TikTok social media platform. Um, Relevant here, if this lady has friends, I wonder what her friends think about this. And her legal counsel. I wonder what her family thinks about this. Plaintiffs initiated, planned, and I wonder what her son thinks about this. Four university students. Like he had to grow up with her. With one of the I wonder if I she's like this I keep laughing there, not because in the of house, the tragedy, but because of how making stuff up. These statements from Ashley know. are, and this is how she decides to spend her year. But continuing, uh, plaintiff sought to evade suspicion for these by conspiring with her counsel to file a frivolous complaint with falsified factual allegations that supported the defamation claims against the defendant and deprived defendant of her constitutional rights. The defendant further asserts the conspiracy between the plaintiff and her okay, counsel. Uh, I just want to know. Filing of plaintiff's complaint. It also includes plaintiff. What's happening to her? To the media about plaintiff's like in real life. Lawsuit against what is she doing? Like right now. Suing her livelihood. What do you think the professor got from this, Ashley? I guess in response to that, she threw in the first counterclaim, which was defamation. Second counterclaim, defamation. Third counterclaim, obstructing justice. Fourth counterclaim, action for neglect to prevent 42. Conspiracy to interfere with the rights of due process of freedom of speech. Fifth counterclaim, civil action for deprivation of rights. Sixth and counterclaim, the crazy thing is, prosecution. Seventh um, counterclaim, she's not the only person like this. There's Eighth so many people like this. Justice. Ninth and counterclaim, action I feel bad for it. To prevent everyone that has to deal with people like this right in the real life <laughs> maybe a co-worker maybe a friend but hopefully they're not 
your friend, you uh, need to cut that person off because they're making all this stuff up for nothing. News coverage defaming Ashley Gilliard. Plaintiff moves to dismiss each of these claims against her, arguing that they are not only factually implausible but legally deficient. Further, plaintiff moves to quash the summons of her counsel, arguing that their issuance is procedurally okay. improper. Each of these motions uh, is right skip for the, the court's consideration. Reading parts. <laughs> 6th, 7th, 10th, and 11th counterclaims. Together, these counterclaims presume and depend upon an alternate version of events surrounding the of so on. Namely, the plaintiff orchestrated everything and then colluded with her counsel to bring this action against defendants to silence her clairvoyant insight into the true extent um, of plaintiff's involvement. The problem with this theory, however, the is that there's court no case, objective basis court, to believe the plaintiff court did day, the things that defendant publicly the day in court, and repeatedly claimed uh, she needs did. To be televised that her intuitive <laughs> on YouTube or live stream and investigative um, skills because I really want to see what she says in court. She claims that during her spiritual crazy. research, she was intuitively led to the University of Idaho History Department and spiritually inquired into each person listed on the History Department's webpage seeking their role in the as defendant describes it, the insight into the plaintiff in particular because this is crazy she believed her allegations about plaintiff were true and that with discovery she can find evidence that bears this out oh so that's why she wanted that discovery we covered earlier defendant also claimed the plaintiff as a professor in the university of idaho possibly knew the deceased students and was involved in there without more these explanations do not support a plausible claim for relief under yeah to begin defendant cannot use discovery as a fishing expedition <laughs> to find facts that might validate her counterclaims. This ready-aim-fire approach is not permanent under the federal rules of civil procedure. Moreover, on a motion to dismiss, courts genuinely may not consider materials, including discovery, other than complaints, allegations, and documents made part of that complaint. In short, the pleading requirements does not provide a key to unlock all the doors of discovery for a plaintiff armed with nothing more than conclusions. Again, a complaint must be plausible on its face. More to the point, defendant does not present to the court in either of her answer and counterclaims or her response to plaintiff's right, yeah, motion. Is a lot of reading factual account for me. that would allow the court to interfere with the existence so I of mostly just want to hear what he's plaintiff. instead um, based solely on her claim to his to own opinions or his thoughts the truth defendants mix about um attic when under all Idaho this. law claims of conspiracy must be pled with specificity 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 <laughs> specific it the there's no other way I would like to spend my time getting better from COVID than reading through some absolute buffoonery in a legal document I can't believe this is real still I feel like the pink sauce lady in the TikTok psychic here is having a uh, stupid off in uh, 2023. I can't really tell you winning. It's really hard. In, in this case, I think the TikTok psychic is actually winning this because this is just a new level. It, of this, is this is worse really than silly being sus lady. To be uh, goofing around this much in the court of law. At bottom, the court struggles to accept the defendant's allegations as creating factually plausible counterclaims against Dang. plaintiff. This when she loses this case, motion to I wonder if she just has to pay money or if she'll go to jail to or something. I don't know. To state a claim upon which relief can be granted. Granted. Oh, so this is one of those moments where she's representing herself and she's coming across as not the sharpest tool in the shed here. Like, oh boy. Is defaming someone like we have lawyers for a reason. Like defaming someone the is why. that a in Idaho only statements of opinion may enjoy constitutional protection. False is that enough of fact good enough reason to go to jail? I don't think so. Implicate that the distinction, but they do not give rise there's actual, to like, murderers out there, but she nor does defendant believe that plaintiff brought her um, claims in the wrong venue. Rather than bring a claim, defendant should have challenged she plaintiff's murder claims anyway, from proper venue lying. or on someone. B3. So if I don't we know skip if, down um, to the order here of this memorandum, uh, you this have, would be, based on the foregoing, it is hereby this ordered to the plaintiff's prison or something. most outrageous. And guess who responded to that? None other than our TikTok psychic with a <coughs> freaking 17-page document. She has way too much free time. Way, way too much. She has nothing better oh, to do. Man. She has a kid. Take care of your kid. She's doubling down here as well. She follows up this response after the what we just read again by saying, Rebecca Schofield planned, initiated, ordered, and executed the da 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 You know what? Oh, man. And then, of course, painting herself as the hero oh, here. She, I feel uh, like she posted all of her maybe child protective services and tip line and will so be and so um, so involved she's claiming here, because if judgment, she's like this if court in real judgment real life, in real life of the to the public matter, I wonder how she is at home or acted in a manner of inconsistent um, process and then she called out I guess does Rebecca's her side son for like wanna equitable to speak a on her um, activity at home like is she crazy at home employment I don't know University of Idaho limiting Schofield's ability to perform new studies and produce new work and severe mental distress or worries that an unknown like, made up person I feel like if you're raised with a parent action. that's um, messed up in the head I have then no clue the kid like gets the I guess it seems like she's like upset that the bad the end of it growing up so um, money to go maybe they need lawsuit. therapy the, or something the I don't know part of all this here is uh, this is what uh, Ashley wants out of this she wants uh, to dismiss the action due to lack of subject matter jurisdiction dismiss the action due to lack of personal jurisdiction pursuant to rule 12 v2 dismiss the action with prejudice due to 
failure to state a claim for relief pursuant to rule set aside order document 49 pursuant to rule 60 b4 and finally to award ashley gilliard all court related fees and sanctions pursuant to rule 11c in the amount of a million dollars pursuant to b chambers v nasco in what world does she get a million dollars from this in what world does any of this make sense? This doesn't make sense. This is the dumbest lawsuit I've ever seen in my life. I feel terrible for the this professor. This needs to Anyone be live streamed. Brain cells understands that she's innocent, but unfortunately, she still has to deal with all this BS because I guess this TikTok psychic will happily drag her name through the mud just for some attention on TikTok. And now she's lost her TikTok accounts because of all this because it was targeted harassment. But uh, she's not giving up the. Okay, so that is the end of this. Um, yeah, that's so dumb that she involved herself in something that she had no no business of doing um yeah i feel like they need to check up on her son because um <clears throat> i wonder like if she mentally abuses him or something i don't know i don't know these people and i'm not going to claim that she does because uh i'm not gonna i'm not trying to be in a lawsuit like she is but um yeah the crazy thing is also that there are probably people that actually believe her too that's crazy but um yeah if you have nothing better to do just um go to sleep <laughs> like you don't have to make up stuff for attention on the internet like just go to sleep but um that is the end of this video thanks for watching please subscribe let me know what else i should react to in the comments below and if you want to see my experiences in korea you can check out my first channel sexy v and if you want to see my other socials it's right here under my face thanks for watching and i'll see you next time bye